Hi everyone, Anthony from Outlier. Dan and Darren from Backman Builders. And we're here today at our red brick reno. Um, look, with energy prices increasing, uh, and you know, we're all trying to do our best to reduce our impact on the environment, there's never been a better time to look at existing housing stock and how we can make them more energy efficient and how we can make them more healthy and more comfortable. Um, you know, the good news is that any home can be improved on. You don't need to look outside the existing footprint or do major extension or alterations to do that. So, you know, what are we looking at with this particular project? Yeah, Anthony, look, we're looking at a sustainability first renovation. So it's a basically just all internal renovations, refurbs, new floors coming up, new kitchen, new bathrooms. So our f f sole focus is um, to have a, an airtight, a nice airtight home, um, putting nice insulation in, Proclimber wraps um, on our subfloors and just making it a really comfortable home to limit, live in for our client. Look, if we want to take you on that journey, um, please subscribe and, and like this content. It, it makes us, it gives us the ability to produce more of it, um, you know, come along and see how we're implementing particular details to make this home more healthy, comfortable and energy efficient. So once again, we've got the blower door set up. It's one of our favorite tools, as you're all probably gathering by now. The home's a 1950s era um, brick veneer with a timber subfloor. And of this age or era of home, we typically see anywhere from 20 to 30 air changes. Now that's pretty significant when most Australian homes today under our National Construction Code are meant to be built to sort of around that 10 air changes an hour or less. Uh, our goal for this project particularly is to introduce uh, a heat recovery ventilation system, um, a decentralized one to be specific, and we'll, we'll go into the details of that further down the line. But we wanna get a five air change an hour or sub five air change an hour at 50 pascals for this project. That's gonna require a significant amount of air sealing to occur to the timber subfloor, and I'll get Dean to touch on that. But uh, 23 air changes an hour, which is the result we've received for this. We won't be needing a cover. We wanna get as much uh, airflow through here as possible. So we've also identified where all the main air leakage is occurring, which is what we want to be able to focus our time and energy on rather than, you know, the throwing as much mud at the wall and hoping some sticks approach. So we'll highlight some of those air leakage points uh, specifically in a moment as well. It's uh, a big part of your pre-construction process as well, Dean. Yeah, definitely. Thanks, Anthony. It's, um, it's been a great tool for us. We've obviously got a great collaborative pre-construction process. So we've been to this house throughout uh, our stages of site checks, um, which we've been able to bring our carpentry team in in particular, as well as highlight some areas for some other trades in the house that we'll get to. But uh, basically by running the blower door test, we've been able to come in through pre-construction to recognize where some areas are gonna need fixing, uh, have a bit more of a tension so that we can get some better air tightness in the house. Uh, I think at the moment we're at about 23 air changes an hour. So there's That's a fair right. bit, uh, a lot of it is in the subfloor, which we can get to. Uh, but little areas, just for example here, uh, the windows have already been retrofitted by the client. Uh, the architraves are on, but it's not really sealed that well. So our team know that we've got to come in, remove architraves, seal it back around before putting the architraves back. And all those little steps are gonna add up to help us reach under five air changes an hour. Every new build alongside the blower door, we like to use our thermal camera. And even more so with this particular project, as the client had already had blowing insulation installed in all of the existing walls on the external perimeter of the home. Um, now that was great, they did a really fantastic job. However, there's a little, uh, a little bit of inconsistency with the, cons with the uh, distribution of that insulation, I should say. And again, with the uh, thermal camera, we were able to identify where those spots were. So we can just see up here that there's a portion um, where there's, they've missed a bay between a stud and that internal wall junction. So 
That now lets us identify that weak point that Dean can then take uh, and uh, install insulation in. Now, there's some other things happening here as well in this particular instance, Dean. Yeah, that's right, Anthony. So we're actually a little bit fortunate in this instance to make the ease of fixing the missing insulation in the wall that we're gonna have a doorway going through to an existing laundry out here. So we will be doing a little bit of removal of plaster and fixing some framework up. So in this instance, we're lucky it's not in the middle of a wall being left. But uh, yeah, this is a, a great tool for us through our pre-construction to get the scope of work right, to be able to make sure that we're not missing anything. Uh, the client knows it's being included. And uh, once it's done, it's gonna be yeah, a warmer part of the wall. Fantastic. So the external walls had the blown insulation um, installed and we touched on that. But for anyone who's curious, it's just a little hole that's inserted through the plaster that allows access and the insulation is blown in. And then they just come back over with a bit of top, cake, uh, top coat plaster and just cover over that, that hole. And then it's up to you to then be able to paint that out. Um, we also have the UPVC windows um, that were retrofitted. Um, in. So a lot of uh, this journey had already begun by the time we were involved. So we, we're really looking at this as an overall energy audit or energy retrofit, let's say, um, of this home. Um, as part of that, we're going to try and retain the hydronic panel heating here. Uh, but what we will need to focus on is how we can then air seal where those penetrations go through, as we're going to be installing a vapor permeable wrap over the joist to the under and level with the underside of the joist to then uh, provide our air control layer um, for the subfloor and then insulation, bulk insulation will then be over the top of that and then our new flooring reinstated. Um, where there's GPOs as well, we identified a lot of air leakage occurring. So a GPO is a general power outlet, um, so just your power point, typical power point. So where they are on the external walls and also light switches, we'll be able to remove those and retrofit an airtight container and then reinstate that on the external wall. So we've improved the air tightness there. As part of that, we're also going to uh, need to remove some of the architrave, uh, architraves on these windows so that we can then insert some insulation between the reveal of the window frame and the jam stud of the timber wall frame, and then also provide a nice silicon or polyurethane bead continuously around that opening to air seal it. And then the architraves can be reinstated. Hi. Thanks for taking the time to come and have a look at the Hybrid Home course. It's been produced by Outlier Studio and we've been working on it for the last 18 months. Look, we cover all the topics that you're going to need to be able to upskill and learn a little bit more about how you can have a higher performing home. We look at energy efficient housing design in general, orientation, air tightness, insulation, ventilation, thermal bridging, glazing, and we do touch on cost a little bit too. Although disclaimer, it's only at the current time of recording that we've been able to put those forward. You'll find everything from as-built verifications in which we have our own services and advice, helpful handouts that touch on all of the topics that we discuss that you can see on the left-hand side here in the video. We consider things in detail like how we go about recording our height for shading. We also do some demonstrations on how to achieve better results in a NATHERS assessment. You'll see what looks like when we do our inspections and see the thermal bridging occurring. And you can also have a look at a previous um, presentation from Builders Declare that we did. We look at the importance of ventilated cavities and the right wraps and moisture control, as well as the ventilation systems. Thermal bridging is a big one that we touch on and a step-by-step -step process of how to install a window. On top of that, you've got all these fantastic construction details you can use for projects yourselves and in your documentation. We look at all the best practices, high performance, and even airtight construction as well in these details. So please take the opportunity now to purchase the course. You will not regret. Okay, so now we're at the point where we've actually gone through all of our pre-construction process. We've gone through uh, extensive site investigation, site meetings, design team and client. We start reaching the point where we're hitting the construction stage. So a big thing uh, running a building business is communication and we have all types of communication. A uh, pretty pivotal one when we get to site and we start bringing our, our teams in, trades coming in and out is uh, how we're going to communicate. Now, one thing that we like to do, uh, and it's always a work in progress, is a non-verbal communication. So we first offset a bit of a rundown up here. So the, basically an R system, 
Uh, we'll go around the house, which we'll show in a second uh, with what we do, but we've basically got green here for reuse, blue here for recycle and repurpose, and then we'll call it yellow here for remove and reduce landfill. So basically with our team, before we go um, knocking into things, uh, pulling things apart, we wanna make sure we can clarify what we're gonna use there. So we'll give some instances um, on site before we get stuck in of what each thing can be done and how we like to think outside the box to reduce our, our waste. So yeah, just little uh, things that we can use such as tapes and paints, maybe different colors, textures. It's all about making communication a bit simpler. Um, we may not be here ourselves the whole time, so it might be one of our workers that come in and we know that we can mark this out. So plan is green is to reuse. So we know we're gonna have to do some construction methods behind the architrave. So we wanna make sure that's labeled. Our guys will come through, label each piece. So later on, it makes it easier to know where it's coming and going. Uh, so that'll be definitely reused. Um, things down here, like with the blue for like repurpose or recycle it. So uh, for later on down the track, we're gonna be able to use these skirtings in a way that we can display in a later episode. But uh, that is gonna mean that we're not actually needing to go through purchase more unnecessary materials and we'll keep that out of landfill and we'll have a, a purpose to keep, uh, keep staying in this house. So yeah, keep posted on that one. <laughs>